Hello everyone. Um, today is the 5th of January 2020 and um, I'm on here today to pay tribute to a tour de force of astrologers, a, uh, a towering figure in many ways, particularly in the 70s, uh, of Noel Till. His passing was six days ago and he left us on the 31st of um, December 2019. In many ways, this was like his own personality, a significant date because that was the date that he was born. And of course, this is the date also that he left us. A sense of completion, perhaps um, recognizing that uh, uh, things begin and things end. He was a tour de force, as I said, of astrologers, a towering figure and an important one in the history of astrology. Never mind those things that he's left behind, his works, his, uh, his, uh, 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 his relationships with people, his uh, books and so on. And um, I would like to do, uh, consonant with, I believe, the stature of the man, I would like to do, first of all, a personal tribute, a personal story of my relationships, uh, my relationship with Noel and how I saw him. I'd also saw our outlines, mostly people know uh, about his life. And I'm going to do this in three parts. Uh, the first part, as I say, is my own personal story and uh, a, a few uh, vignettes, as he would say, he loves to um, do vignettes, uh, but Noel Till um, uh, uh, was, uh, I suppose, that uh, that character who could describe things and say things in such a dramatic style. It tried to invoke in you a, a feeling of being there, a feeling of being caught up in the drama. This is how he was in his personality. This is how he was in uh, the way he conducted himself. And this is the way that he wrote as well and taught. Of course, uh, I'm going to do um, his books and uh, what he wrote and um, ha have a go, I suppose, of trying to draw a, uh, a thread throughout all of them to see what the uh, prevailing trends were and his philosophy as life. I'm going to do that in the second part. And in the third part, I thought I would do an astrological tribute by looking at his own chart and uh, maybe even trying to attempt to do it in his own inimitable style, uh, uh, not necessarily to a, an impersonation of him. Nobody could possibly do that. But I wanted to but I wanted to take us through what he taught me, his, his, what his, his work has left in me and uh, perhaps do, as I say, an interpretation using his own systems and ideas of astrology. That will be in part three. I first came across the work of Noel Till in 1981. I was a budding student of, um, of music in Leeds. At that time, I went there in 19... Uh, it turned 1979 and uh, I was already interested in astrology at that time from 1976 so I had already about five years uh, doing astrology studying Margaret Hone um, theosophical astrology I had a teacher who was an occultist and theosophist and uh, he introduced me to astrology taught me astrology and uh, took me through all of the traditional uh, elements of it all of the ancient astrologers in England, the Alan Leo, the Margaret Holmes, Seferel, Zadkiel, um, a, a lot of these uh, strange names. They took the names of angels in order to, um, in a way, protect themselves from public view. But these astrologers of old had a particular uh, bent towards astrology, often predictive, a bit fatalistic. And it was this dimension that when I came across the work of Noel Till, suddenly made a leap forward for me. What he was doing was modernising astrology for a, a new age, what he called the Aquarian Age. I... Um, and of course it was the Aquarian age and we're still in it uh, it's a it's a, a kind of passing from one old form to another to a, a general uh, idea about what the future holds a general uh, a route through which the collective humanity is viewing life 
obviously being in the Aquarian age it's more to do with the endeavor of science and uh, understanding in a great way anyway I don't want to get into that too much but uh, I remember actually I'm just remembering when I sent away to uh, Llewellyn's which was his publisher longtime publisher uh, made a terrific impact uh, on them with his work Horoscopus Identity in 1972 uh, but as I say I want to talk more about his books later uh, in the second video uh, but um, when I when I sent away for that I, I got a load of tapes from his lectures and they were tapes of each one of his principles and practice of astrology and I was fortunate enough to go through them and at the beginning of every tape when I eventually, as I say, heard his voice, heard this, his, his man, his style, um, talking to audiences all over the uh, United States, um, he used to say he, he, he had a kind of uh, 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 a tone or an intonation of Lucius Aquarius and that was the beginning of every tape and it, it kind of is a rather like a bell striking you know with his wonderful semi baritone voice that he um, used in his operatic career Look, I could go into uh, the minute details here and I get lost uh, uh, but I, 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 I just find myself wanting to bring um, a, a life, if you, if you like, to these memories, um, because I feel it's important to know, or to at least place down here, some of the imprint, the uh, impressions that were made at that time. So there I am in a rather obscure bookshop in Leeds and I look up on this uh, old fashioned shelf of the, and all of the books are looking at me they're not put in sideways they are actually facing and so the shelf didn't house many books but it had all of them on there from the first one to the last the principles and practice of astrology by noel till i can see the bookshop now in my mind's eye and i didn't have the money at the time to buy them all but i did buy two volumes one was um, volume four and uh, the other one of course was on sex success and illness um, as a young man of course those topics were uppermost in my mind and uh, i took them home and read them so there was a revelatory quality to them um, and i realized they were part of a bigger picture in other words a bigger philosophy that he was teaching a bigger uh, a move on from the fatalistic dimensions of astrology and into the astrology of need tensions of psychological astrology just the very beginning of it in the 1970s when there was a sea change of astrology from fatalistic from traditional and into this uh, idea that you could use astrology to uh, promote your own identity to understand your own identity to understand the needs what he called the uh, the, the, the astrology show your uh, um, the the portrait of your own identity and that these were all the bits and pieces on it and that all these bits and pieces the planets the signs and the houses in different placements they became need tensions they became a process of um, wanting to move out into the world and fulfill them and so a planet within a sign was a need whether it was mars or moon or the sun and it would it would he, the planet in a sign and in a house would give you the basic quality the basic dimension of this uh, internalized need that needed fulfillment and so he was moving from as i say fatalistic dimensions to this dimension of motivation what motivated you and so therefore if mars was in leo what motivated your force for applying the action of your own life applying yourself to life was done in a leo nine manner and it needed to be done in a leo nine manner because that's the best way that mars will be fulfilled in your life the other thing that um, i remember it impressing upon me was that it would lead this need would also lead to a certain kind of behavior and it's at this point when I read that, when I understood um, or what he was getting at, that this was the astrology also of gesture and behavior and behavioral style. 
And it was at that point that I realized that astrology was in us. It was our very substance. So it wasn't just ideas about what we might be like or the future or whether we were going to get married or whatever. Uh, what it was, was that we embodied it. And that if you look out carefully, you could see it. And that's what I learned also by listening to him and some of his lectures. He could spot various dimensions in people and name the planetary placement, not just the sun sign, but certain things. And I took up that device myself. It's a matter of seeing uh, behavior, behavioral attitude, the person in front of you as they um, uh, as they follow the inner dimensions of their horoscope and through whatever means, whether it's their style of shaking hand, whether it's the style of their walk or the way they present themselves, uh, somehow the astrology, particularly the sentence, of course, would be ush uh, um, ushered forth. And if you had the had the um, uh, ability to see it you could translate that behavior into the astrology so you could do it the other way around Tim was always doing that a highly sensitive intuitive astrologer who knew the symbols inside out and could spot them as part of the identity structure of any individual that's what I learned and so I spent the rest uh, about four or five years trying to get all of the other books and learn the entire system which of course then led me to buy others, including the Guide to the Principles of Practice Astrology, which came out in 1979, where he'd written all of the others, the texts from 1972, Astrology's Identity, the 12 volumes, Principles of Practice, and then the Guide, which was a, a, a college curriculum course about how to teach the rest of the astrology using his particular um, form um, and particular organization of astrology. He was interested in uh, brevity. He was interested in trying to capture the essence of a placement through symbolic analogy and then being able to see that in a person's own framework of reality. That was another dimension about Till. Rather than tell a person what this meant, he realized that people wore their horoscopes. They were their horoscopes. There were inter in internal dimensions of them. Uh, uh, they're different parts of themselves. All the different planets represented different needs. And they, they somehow constellated as a group into a single unified personality or identity. And they, they were the motivations. They were the needs. They were the root uh, motivations of the uh, person's uh, personality. And that they would reach out looking for fulfillment in the objective outside world. So this was an astrology of uh, psychology, a, a psychology that people could understand. He introduced need theory through uh, about from uh, derived from Henry Murray. And uh, as I say, I go into this in the second um, uh, talk, uh, second um, uh, video about all this, about the where these come from. But essentially, it was a dynamic astrology. The houses became uh, not only spheres of activity, but areas of activity in which we might fulfill the planets in actuality in the outside world. I've never forgotten the I, the basic one of the basic ideas, and there were so many great ideas here. One of the basic ideas that the planets, the sorry, the houses were the signs brought down to Earth. Uh, so the symbolism of the signs in actuality, in spheres of life, in dimensions of activity and doing and being. He also had a subjective idea of the houses, the second house of self-worth, the way we think in the third, etc. But um, uh, essentially, it was the idea that the external environment and the internal environment met. And the meeting between the outside and the insult created your life or what you made of your life. This is fundamentally what I learned in those years, and I was successful in gaining most of the books that he had written up to that time and uh, have followed uh, ever since that time, right from 1981. It was inevitable then for me at, a venture, at a, some point uh, that I wanted to go to America to meet this man. 
Whoever has met him, he makes an impression. Not only was he six feet eleven tall, he, he was in a rather overblown manner, a rather um, a, a presence that you could not avoid. It was not everybody's cup of tea, um, but nevertheless, there was this sense that he was uh, not just posing in life, but, po uh, but moving through it as a performer. Uh, I think he needed to do this. It was something in him that uh, was so uh, emotionally effervescent, so uh, emotionally captured by things. This is what I was saying about the vignette. He was a master at that, and tanning is tanning the stories, and you could you could literally uh, feel the the actual scenario unfold. Particularly the way he used to use words. He was very particular about words. Liked them announced. Uh, uh, good enunciation, a tremendous uh, wonder with languages, and when he used to speak German uh, almost as a second tongue, uh, second tongue, he, he lived in Germany for a number of years and learnt the language perhaps easily, and he absolutely loved it. On the back of every um, principles and practice of astrology in the books, I remember them. He would he would write his name N O dash E L. In other words, he wanted it pronounced No Well. Not Noel, Noel Till. No, that wasn't any good. Noel Till. And then in brain um, uh, parentheses, he would put T I L L, Till. This is, what, this is how he wanted it pronounced. There was something in pronunciation uh, to, to, to try and um, distill the essence of a person, if you like. Uh, perhaps he was a believer in that old adage, uh, nomen et omen, that name is destiny, or name is a, is the omen or the uh, presenter of the self. Your uh, portrait, your signature, if you like, is in the name. It was inevitable in 1986 then that I flew out to meet him and arranged an appointment. I also did various other things then to look for further study in composition in the United States, but I didn't tell him, but my chief um, uh, reason for going was to see him and have my horoscope read. I've only had my horoscope read three times uh, by various people, and he was the first. I'd come all that way, and at that time, I believe in around about 1985, into 1985, I think it was, um, the, uh, so, sorry, in July 1985, I went out there and landed at uh, uh, Washington, D.C., uh, rather naive. I had a place to stay in Pennsylvania Avenue, I remember. And uh, I was welcomed eventually after an hour. I met a, an artist there who invited me to his house to meet his family, his wife, his daughter, and a uh, very, very accommodating way. And I thought, well... I'm a Cancerian, this is a Cancerian country, this must be one of the best parts of the United States, a kind of homey feel. And people acted on their emotions, and if they liked you, they liked you. The Cancer Ascendant of Noel Till was no different, and when he greeted me, he greeted me wholeheartedly, with a big smile and almost a ho, ho, ho. He realised his stature, uh, six feet tall, was uh, uh, rather overbearing, and so he stood back at a certain distance and kind of not to overwhelm. I got my um, train to Virginia, McLean, Virginia, got out and made my way to his office, which was on Leesburg Pike, I remember, I think it was 144. He'd opened a a, uh, an advertising agency and a PR firm, I believe, with his wife then. And of course, it was around about that time he'd also written Holistic Astrology uh, and published it himself, T.A.I. Till Associates Incorporated. He did a, a self-publishing uh, 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 thing in uh, uh, as a, as a book, it was a kind of encapsulation and further delineation of his particular astrological system. So there I was, I go up in the lift and on the fifth floor, fifth or sixth floor, I go out, turn left, and uh, I said to the secretary, um, I've come here for an appointment and I was led to the room, knocked, come in, was the answer. And so, of course, I went in. And anybody that knows, knows Noel, uh, of course, he was on his most dramatic. He was uh, uh, delighted to see me, delighted to be doing this, to sharing our portion of time, as he would like to say in his office. I must admit, 
I was a bit overwhelmed, um, especially with all his books on one side on the office. And so he had a big desk in front of him. And I, I looked over it and underneath the um, surface glass was a whole series of uh, ephemeris. And so he could see down on, on any date in the 20th century. It had it specially made. And he'd also got this wonderful rug that he used to talk about. He'd spent his last bucks on it because he thought it was so beautiful. This was man as artist. This was a, a, a person uh, highly skilled. This was a person confident in his own abilities and wanted to make my stay, even though it was 50 minutes, he wanted to make that into something important, something dramatic, in order that I take away some sense of um, direction in my life and trying to build it up into something magical typical of his moon in Leo, which I should go more into in the last, in the third video. So we went through the sun moon blend, the building up of the horoscope through the sun moon blend and aspects to it. Uh, we talked about music, we talked about astrology. It was interesting that he advised me more into music than astrology because he, he himself, I suppose, was in it and knew how difficult it was to make any kind of headway in there. And you had to really be, um, really be, uh, uh, apply yourself through it because you had to make your own way. There was no exact career path. I enjoyed the reading. I thought it was was significant. I kind of knew in a way what was what was coming, but to actually have it said in front of you by the master himself was a delight and a joy. Uh, but the most delight and joy I had was at the end. Uh, he was going, that was the end of the day. It was around about 4.30, I believe, uh, moving on to five o'clock. And he said, do you want to lift back to the station? And there I saw the human. There I saw him unguarded, um, delightful, didn't know me, come all that way. He may have even been slightly overawed by the fact that I'd, uh, uh, I'd come 5,000 miles uh, as, as the main centre was to see him. But such was the impact, of course, of his work. My son is at nine degrees Cancer. His son was nine, a ten degrees Cancer, a ten, ten degrees Capricorn. His Jupiter is at ten degrees Capricorn, and one can start to feel even through the dynamism of the chart that how important such a person was to me in my own life at that time. I needed a figure not to emulate, but someone to tell me my own past lacking father, uh, lacking a father figure, um, I, I somehow projected onto this character, particularly through his works, a dynamism that I sought. So it was natural, only natural, that I fly all that way to the States to see the man behind the books. So then we go down to the car park, we chat generally, again, a bit overawed, a bit, I was a bit reserved, I wish I'd been more open really, he gave me a book, his new book, Holistic Astrology, and um, I have it here somewhere. Um, and he, uh, uh, you know, he, this volume of sharing, appreciation, this volume of sharing, um, uh, noble man. I, I think I'll read it now. Yes, I've got it, got it here. What did he write in the, what did he write in it? For Richard, creative man, earnest colleague and new friend. In appreciation, this volume of sharing, no, till July 1987. Actually, this is a book he sent me a year later because I didn't take it. There it is there. Uh, in other words, I wrote to him because he did offer me this book and I said, oh, 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 no, that's OK. Uh, and so and I, was, I was a bit, uh, perhaps a bit shy. I didn't want to uh, take it without buying it in some way. And then I wrote to him and I said, uh, that was a bit silly. So he sent me that a year later. So there I go down. We're in the car park. We go to this enormous car. I have never seen such an enormous car. Well, he was six foot eleven but these american cars it was it was like a kind of small caravan i got in it and i i felt like a midget this is in this leather i can't remember what it was but it was akin to a cadillac uh, a very impressive car um beautiful seats and he it was so smooth in the engine 
and I remember a, a vignette of my own before we parted. He dropped me off at the at the uh, station and said to me, you know, Richard, if you put your mind to it, most things are possible. Good luck. And in that booming voice, and then I watched the car go away and uh, and then uh, went, of course, uh, from that situation into uh, thoroughly thrilled at the meeting and the encounter. That, anyway, was my first encounter with Noel Till. I uh, went eventually uh, across the United States uh, for about three weeks looking for various things and, and so on. But I took back a pleasant memory of a man that wanted the best for me. A man that wanted me to bring out the best in myself. And to that end, his horoscope uh, reading was um, trained and uh, left me with a deep impression, both in my heart and in my mind. It looks as if actually I'm going to have to do a, another video. Perhaps this will stretch to four. Well, why not? The stature of the man seems to call for it. And so I think I'll leave it there for this one and uh, do the next one in relating to his own career. Thank you.